Jack Stuss Homestuck is a self-indulgent podcast featuring a heart player encouraging you to be self-indulgent too. Welcome home. Hey guys, so what you just heard was my brand new intro and I'm going to have a brand new outro. I did not have either of those things when I originally recorded this episode and when I recorded Wednesday's episode. So I'm going to tack them on here uh, and see how they work, but it's not going to make sense for the things I say in the episode doing all the promo that I have here. But I'm getting you guys used to it first, I guess. Anyway, so let me know what you think about it. Um, I thought maybe a pre-recorded intro would stop me from rambling like I'm doing now. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, let me know what you think. And um, I also uh, have to say that originally this uh, week's, um, this Saturday's art was going to be done by Abby, but then we realized, oh, there's the problematic zine. That's the whole thing. And it's actually done by Crow. So this is Crow's Jake from Problematic Zine, which is out today. Go check it out. Link in the description. I'll also be retweeting it and reblogging it and all that fun stuff. So check that out. And uh, now we'll get on with the actual episode that I recorded. And sorry to patrons that I uploaded this early for. And now I'm uh, redoing at 12.30 a.m. Saturday morning. But uh, yeah, here you go. Let's let's talk about Jake. Anyway, welcome to Jaxta's Homestuck. This is our bonus episode. This is going to be the first character episode we have for the uh, Problematic Faves series. Before I forget, thank you to my patrons, Kansas Just Got Gayer and Jacob King. Thank you to Dami for our intro and outro. And thank you to Abby for making the episode artwork. Um, today, we are going to be talking about Jake with uh, Mars. Mars, do you want to introduce yourself, say your pronouns? Uh, hi, I'm Mars. Uh, my pronouns are they, them, or she, her. Okay, cool. And, uh, and yeah, you had a, a few characters you wanted to talk about, so we might have you back later. Um, but today it's all about Jake. So Jake is one of those characters that I don't think has always been on a typical problematic faves list, but as time has gone on with Homestuck, he just starts belonging there a little bit more. Yeah, I... I remember I okay so I got into Homestuck probably around like 2013 2014 um and my first like favorite like couple was Dirk Jake like I loved them and I remember always hearing about how Dirk was problematic and like obviously but then like maybe mm, 2015 2014 like like around, it's around the same time still I start seeing a lot of Jake like Jake is bad kind of thing but like in the same sense but in a different manner like they're both considered like manipulators or like abusive quote unquote but in different ways yeah um yeah i guess i i pretty much only saw a lot of dirk hate around that time not as much jake um but i wasn't as involved in the uh in the fandom around then but yeah jake i mean they both they both are, uh, like you said, they could both can be, I, I think at, at times, usually unintentionally manipulative in, in very, very different ways. Um, but like Jake has this whole thing where um, a lot of his identity is trying to do what he thinks he should be or what other people want him to be. Um, and I feel like there's just a lot of inherent insincerity around that. Um, even though he's trying his best. Yeah, I I think... Mm, I don't know how to word it. I, I'm sorry to keep bringing up Dirk in this Jake episode, but I think when it comes to knowing Jake, you have to know the other three kids around him. Because yeah. while he... Like, obviously, all of their personalities play off each other a lot, but... For Jake especially, it's even stronger because his personality is basically what all three of them want from him. Or at least the, per like the, the personality that he wants to be perceived as. Um, so I think, I, I guess this, also goes, this goes for like all the boy characters, that they all are very easy to manipulate, but in different ways. Mm -hmm. And for Jake specifically, it's 
he allows himself to be manipulated because he's such a people pleaser. But also, he is also a really big manipulator because he wants to be a people pleaser. It, it's funny, like, yes, we keep bringing up Dirk. But but Dirk is, like, essential to understanding Jake. And uh, one of the ways that they contrast is they're both kind of self-absorbed, but in different ways. Like, Jake um, is always talking about his problems to everyone else without taking that time to step back and say, wait, are they really wanting to listen to this? And, and just kind of uh, dominating a lot of the conversations and just, he accidentally hurts a lot of people in a lot of different ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, mm, I think it also plays into their class specs, like going with class spec theory, like the kind of like what fandom perceives as the correct class spec class spec theory right now mm -hmm. is that I think it just comes with being a quote unquote active class like being a prince and a page you mm, there's like I feel like a lot of active classes there's, there's a sense of like your perception of the world is more based on self like you're very self-centered even though like that can come out in different ways obviously but it's like you're mostly concerned about the self as opposed to outside everything around you. Whereas like most passive players are like, not all, because I'd say John is pretty self-centered in a stupid way. Um, but like a lot of passive players tend to like look outside of themselves or like kind of step up to be not step up, but like kind of are able to like look out them, look above themselves, look outside themselves. Um, and I guess John, I keep bringing up different characters to explain this, but it's for John, much like Jake, is weirdly self-centered, but also in a people pleaser sense as well. Yeah. But what separates the two is that Jake is a people pleaser, but inherently self-centered. John is a self-centered protagonist, but is inherently a people pleaser. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I, I get where you're going with that. Yeah. Um, how, yeah, because they're so similar, but so different in like some key aspects, but it comes from like a lot of the same places. But yeah, and um, so so there's there's issues with that, with him being kind of self-centered. And then we have, if we want to bring in, I guess, alternate versions of Jake. Um <laughs> Anytime he gets brought up in like some other sense, he just gets dunked on like with hive swap. Uh not great. Jake Harley <laughs> there. Um it's just a lot of I mean, and if we bring up some cursed lore that's probably not canon, like that uh New Year's uh release. Okay, full disclosure. I under I was I was still in the fandom when that was that came out. Like I wasn't active, but like I was still watching it. And but yeah. I don't I remember reading Hussey's apology, but I gotta be honest, I never read like the actual content itself, so I don't know anything about that. That's fair. We don't <laughs> we don't have to dig into that. I basically it just dunked on Jake a lot. And um and then we get into have you read the epilogues? Uh yeah. So also questionably canon, but we just get more insight to Jake, like, no, don't look at me, I'm stupid. Um, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to think about anything, but he's, he's smart and he's back to the kind of manipulation where he like, doesn't want anyone to know that he's smart, that he, he just wants to like, let like sit back and let other people do stuff for him. Yeah. I'd say if I had to describe Jake's biggest issue is that if there's a gun being held to his head and it's labeled responsibility, he's pleading, sir, please. No, I'm a himbo. I can't do any of this. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think, okay, actually, or I'm going to go back to my John Jake um, dichotomy there. The epilogues also kind of do that too. It kind of just kind of shown like that. If you look in Candy and you look at how John gets everything he wants, but is trying to better everything a little too late, obviously, but he's trying to make it better for everyone. Whereas Jake is like, man, I really hate this, but might as well maintain this who and then also when he wants to better himself it's specifically for himself and not for anybody else yeah such as in the instance of like 
like it's a whole moment where he has a hope bubble and he brings Tavros along to John's house and he's like, we're going to make this better. He's just saying, I'm going to make myself better. And also I just have guilt about my son specifically, but I don't actually care about anybody else. Or, and if I do, which he does, I'm not, I'm not saying he doesn't, but if I do, I just don't want to fix them too. Cause I can barely fix myself. Yeah. Oh, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> I really he's such a mood um, but yeah so that's kind of the basics of, I, I think we've covered like most of the things that, that makes Jake a, a problematic character or is there anything else that really sticks out to you um, I'd say just his justification not justification but like a, a, the, the second part of him that makes him the way he is like that it's two of his issues can or his issues can be kind of divided into either the people pleaser please stop perceiving me or hollywood disease and obviously it's like a Venn diagram right there but yeah. he suffers from hollywood disease as well where it's like much like jane we have content but it's him trying to fit into a female narrative even though he doesn't really realize it or maybe he does i don't know i don't care um, or you have Jane who wants to fit into the male narrative because that's what she's told. She's given, and it's also based around their guardians and who they obviously idolize. He has grandma and he has all these female actresses that he wants to emulate. She has, um, pardon, Jane has her dad and has all of these detectives and guys that she wants to emulate. So obviously they're going to take after these guys and so they're going to flip their narratives and they're going to suffer from Hollywood disease because Hollywood disease is looking at Hollywood and being like, this is how my life should be. And it hurts both of them. It does. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just the whole, like, I should be like this. I'm going to try to be like this. Whether I am like this isn't part of the point here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of it really does come down to just Jake's idea with who he is at any point in time and what he thinks he should be. And I, a lot of the kids come down to that, but it's, it's really, um, a, a huge thing for Jake. Yeah. But um but yes, we love him anyway cuz he's a good boy. Yeah, I think I mm, I think he is an inherently good person if I want to use good in the definition of he doesn't want to screw people over mm -hmm. and he doesn't mean to. He's just like, I don't think he wants to be mean. I just think he is inherently selfish. Yeah. But I think he's also inherently good. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of the issues just come down to kind of how the alpha kids don't keep each other in check at all. Um, and they have a lot of stuff that they need to be keeping each other in check about, whether it's uh, Dirk's controlling behavior or Roxy's alcoholism or, you know, there's, there's a lot of problems that they just say, well, this is you and we're not going to do anything, even if we quietly dislike it. Yeah, but it's still better than nothing, just because yeah. we can see how in the beta verse we have them not interacting at all or in a way where they're not peers, because obviously Mom Alonde and Grandpa interact, obviously, but it's not equal. They aren't really peers. It's yeah. more like a daughter and a father kind of relationship by like the looks of it, but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So them having each other is definitely better than nothing because yeah, their worst selves really come out in beta verse, except for Jane who just gets to be a lovely grandmother. <laughs> yeah. I, mm, I don't know if that's worse or better though, but I, mm, not this episode. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, so yeah, Jake does try to be good. Um, and he, the kind of person he wants to be is, is a good person. And I just, he's very relatable to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I've been, I, I, I've been relating to him more and more these past like month or so. Yeah. Cause it, it just kind of goes back to his, his sense of identity and, you know, he does recognize that he's not the greatest at at everything and he wants to get better but then the epilogues happen and no one does anything to help each other get better so what attracted you to jake as a character um i 
think arguably he's probably the most complex character in Homestuck. Mm-hmm. Cause, cause it just leans back into his like he doesn't want to be perceived except in the way he wants to be to that specific person. Yeah. And so it's just like what he shows versus what he doesn't like the difference between his true self and his persona is probably the biggest contrast of any of the humans and arguably any of the characters in general. Yeah, for sure. He, I think he hates, I mean, not think he hates his true self. I think that much is pretty obvious. Yeah. It's, but he also, I think he's in, weirdly critical of himself in a way because he also hates the things that aren't necessarily bad. Like, obviously he's like, oh, I hate, you know, being a burden on my friends or I hate, you know, being selfish and only talking about my problems. Like, yeah, that's, yeah, you're going to feel bad about that. Of course, that's not, that's normal. But he also like when Arania has, Arania, Arania, Arania comes to her room, his room and sees comic books. Obviously he's embarrassed by like, you know, blue spider girl meets blue spider girl. Like, yeah. Oh God, please, hot girl, don't see this. But it's also like he, I think he's also just ashamed of being a nerd and not being perceived in the way, like he's ashamed of being perceived in a way he doesn't want to be perceived. So if somebody comes and tries to enter him and his space that he hasn't provided them or like consented to, like that's just, he's just going to go, mm, it's, I, it's just a weird sense of like shame towards being yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it, it super does. Um, Cause yeah, uh, especially at the beginning, he hypes himself out to be like some big adventure loving, you know, man's man, I guess. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and yeah, there are signs that he doesn't think like align with that. He's like, no, 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 you can't come up in here and see me in general. You can see this one thing I show you. And I, I think thinking about that whole scene with Arania and everything, it is really interesting how he creates this version of Dirk in his head that can see and understand more of him. And it's like he has to have one person that he can be more in with, even if that person is imaginary. There's not really a lot of commentary to say that because I'm just that's just a statement. Like I agree with that. Yeah. I, <laughs> Like, you know when, like, you find, like, somebody says something and you're like, man, I want to add on to this, but you've said it all. That's how I feel. Yeah, no, that's, that's fair. That, that happens a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah. I love that dude. I'm yeah. <laughs> I throw darts at his face, but, like, I love that dude. Yeah, he's, he's a good <laughs> dude. He's complicated. He gets, he just wants to be left alone and maybe not have everyone trying to make out with him, but maybe people will like his button. That's fine. Yeah. I think mm, this is kind of very off tangent, but mm. I think, you know how we were talking earlier about how there's, it's inherently good versus inherently selfish. I think like those two can combine. And I think that's what makes Jake a good person is that selfish can be good sometimes. Selfish means I want my friends to be alive by any means necessary. Yes. Even at the cost of my own life, let's say. Like, or I want my friends to be all here. I want everyone to be okay. That's kind of selfish, quote unquote. But I still think, mm, I don't know. It's the love of your friends mixed with your like your self-centeredness just makes jake a very loving person even if he himself doesn't see that or understand that yeah i guess it's also because it's set off against his what is it his introvertedism introvertism mm -hmm. because he's like man why am i a hermit and why do i find these people that i love so exhausting well, guess what, buddy? That's just how it be sometimes. You could still love them and also need a lot of time to yourself. That's fine. 
these kids don't know what boundaries are. They don't you know they're sixteen. Like they don't, they don't know anything, and they're they don't have any guardians to set an example. All they have is TV. And what does TV tell them? Absolute lies that make them unhappy. Yeah, yeah. Going off of just what what TV shows them is definitely a big thing, um, especially for Jake. But he he wants to be good. He loves his friends, and he just wasn't made for the whole hero thing like he initially thought he should be. Yeah, it's that it's that Hollywood disease, but also yeah. in a weird. I think it's because he, it will both of them, Jane and Jake, mm-hmm. where it's like you see these characters and you admire them and you admire their qualities, but they're not you, like in the gender sense. Yeah. Um, so you see, oh, what is the role I'm supposed to have? Oh, it looks like dashing, rugged hero, Mr. Indiana Jones, or, you know, housewife that isn't involved and just tends to the family because my you know, hardworking husband is a detective out in the fields, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm not sexist and from the early night twentieth century. I don't know what those shows are. <laughs> yeah. And so they're like, oh, well I guess I have to be like that. So then they're like, hmm, then who can be the role that I actually admire? Oh, it's each other. She Jane sees a hero that she wants to admire. Because she doesn't know, obviously. She doesn't know any better. And yeah. he sees a lovely lit young lady that is suitable, you know, heroin damsel material, let's say. Little do they know that they're like, wait a minute, this is awful and enables us in the worst way possible. Yeah. Roxy is really the only one of the alphas who kind of came out like fine for the most part uh which is funny considering like in can like in the actual story or like in the epilogues um mostly in the epilogues like she definitely still has some issues but um but c- comparatively i yeah because I, yeah, I guess it's not the worst one like obviously but i still think it's pretty bad in the sense of like because roxy as the only passive player, obviously sees the big picture and is willing to put herself behind it. Yeah. She's like, I'll put everything on about myself on the back burner for everybody else. Um, not that the others aren't willing to do that. It's just like, it comes easier to, we're like more natural to Rossi. Um, so she does that for the entirety of the epilogues and it leaves her very, very unhappy. And so, but she's also just an inherently passive person. She's not going to confront if she doesn't need to. So I think even though it's the not as evidently the worst outcome, I still think that the epilogues leave are basically all of their worst traits, like for the alphas, all of their worst traits come to fruition, not necessarily in the beta verse sense, but like in a much more similar, oh, I understand how point A got to point B if these circumstances are met. For sure. Like, we say Dirk is controlling, but Jane is controlling, and Dirk is suicidal. The, I'm saying in terms of, like, their worst qualities. Like, obviously, Dirk is controlling, but I think Jane is controlling and also has, has a sense of self-preservation that Dirk just isn't capable of having. Um, Jake allows himself to not have responsibility and then be like, am I a bad father? And John's like, um, uh, uh no, chief. <laughs> um, and Jake's just like, thanks. Even though they both know that's kind of like, mm. and yeah, you can blame other people for those circumstances as well. But also there comes a time in your life when you're almost 40 to kind of take responsibility for your child. You know, that kind of happens. Yeah. So that wraps, wraps up. Uh, Jake, is there anything else that, that you want to talk about, Jake? How wonderful uh, he is? Um, if any of you hurt him, I'll hurt you. I <laughs> love that kid. Like, I'll never, I never really talk about him often, but like, I really do love him as a character and like as a person. I mean, I feel like I'd punch him at least once in my life. 
like you know when like there's a character where you're like man you're a really good character but if i met you in real life i would hate you that's like most of the characters I that's <laughs> like man you're such a good character but i hope you're never a real person yeah that's yeah, that's most of the characters I like. <laughs> that's every single problematic character. Yeah, yes. That is this series. <laughs> <laughs> but uh uh but yeah, so do you have um anything you wanna promo your your Twitter or uh coffee or anything like that? Um yeah, both my Twitter and my AO3 account, it's at Mercurial Hecate. Cause I'm writing a my my like Jane fic right now it's called Jane Reflect it's just like my opinions on her and kind of just like a less bastardization of what we are seeing and also Hussey basically said fans take the wheel so that's what I'm gonna do yeah yeah for sure okay cool um yeah so I'll have those links in the uh description down below and thank you for coming on and and talking about jake yeah thank you for having me yeah no for sure and i'll i'll see if we we grab you back for any future uh characters because yes there are still characters to come and grab we need more people to talk about this or else it's going to be like the same three people talking about all these characters um <laughs> But, but yeah, I will see you guys uh, Wednesday where Goblin will be on to talk about ancestors. This podcast's theme is Dirty Dirt Kenny and was created by Domi, who can be found on SoundCloud as Domino Thief. The art for the podcast was done by Abby, who you can find on Twitter at Space Arby's. Unless it wasn't. Shout out to my patrons, Kansas Just Got Gayer and Jacob King. To become a patron and get episodes up to five days early, along with other benefits, go to patreon.com slash socially anxious dragon and sign up for as little as $1 a month. You can find links to that and more in the episode's description, on the podcast's Twitter, JaxDoesHS, or on JaxDoesHomestuck.com. Please remember to rate this podcast on iTunes and share with your friends. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to be a little selfish. <laughs>